Hi, I'm Reverend Zach. I'm Frank Zeus. And welcome to This Movie Was a Hot Dog, a podcast where me and my brother over here, Francis, watch a bad movie, critically, financially, or otherwise. Then we review it down and... Bleh, and bleh, 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 bleh. Totally blew the intro there. We watch a movie, then we say things into a microphone. I agree with this. <laughs> this week, we watched 1988's Cheerleader Camp, also known as Bloody Pom Poms. This was a... Uh, a listener suggestion. Uh, I don't know his name because when I went to go look at the message today, it had disappeared. Uh, John, I believe it was. Was it John? I think it was John, yeah. Maybe John, maybe not. <laughs> Last name unknown. His thing disappeared. All I know is I saved the link. So whomever you are that sent this to us, thank you, I guess. Well, we always say thank you, but sometimes the thank you is said a lot differently. Well, I mean, this mo- okay. First of all, this uh, this movie stars uh, Betsy Russell, Leif Garrett, Lucinda Dickey, George Buck Flower, Terry Weigel, and Rebecca Ferrati. So some names. I mean, Betsy Russell, Leif Garrett, uh, Buck Flower. What was too. Betsy Russell in that was notable? She was in like every single Saw movie, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She you're was right. A, she was in a couple other things, but I mean, Buck Flower. I mean, he's just this. Uh, this scraggly looking dude with a with a mop top and like a like a lot of facial hair. He's an older guy. You've seen him in a thousand things. Leaf Garrett is like a seventies pop singer, <laughs> something something. I think I don't know. This is uh, as in case you couldn't guess from the movie from the title, Cheerleader Camp. It's supposed to be a slasher movie, but it's not. It's kind of a slasher movie, kinda. If you watch the second or the. I don't know, last eighth of the movie? Well, yes. I mean, people die, but, like, it got so far into it without any slashing that I was, like, I was starting to think maybe this was, like, a psychological thriller or something. Which we've seemed to have a lot of lately. That why? We do? Oh, well, you know, the sidekicks thing. You remember that? Okay, well, that wasn't a psychological thriller, we for made, sure. We made it out to be. <laughs> well, we made it out to be. We didn't have to make this one out to be, and it just was. So... This has this movie starts with the most boring credits in the world. The music is just like bling, 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 bling. wow. It's just sounds. It's just creepy sounds. <laughs> While on a black backdrop, just white text pops up and flashes. Then just the title cheerleader camp pops up and still frame. There's no like '80s guitar music. There's no. Ta-da! Pomp and circumstance is just like name of the movie. Here we go. I did like the music. That, it's not those are. That's not music. It was it's just sound. sound. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't mind it. I would say that. Okay, so you like the noises the TV was making at you? I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, did you say who directed this? No, I don't know who directed it. Was it was John Quinn, and he is one of my favorites. Oh Jesus Christ! I'm glad. I'm. Gl- I'm so happy you brought that up, <laughs> so you could say the same fucking joke. <laughs> okay, so what happens next? The movie starts. Uh huh. What happens? Oh, there's a gal that like in some sort of dream world we think, and she's gonna perform a cheerleading routine in an empty stadium. Yeah, she, it's it's the main character named Allison. Right. Who we later find out this is a dream sequence because everything's filmed at a Dutch angle. A Dutch angle. What's a Dutch angle? The angle that in every scene of this was filmed. I don't have time to take you to film school every week, Francis. Okay, fine. Basically, her arms just start getting slashed in this dream, and like her parents are there, but they don't care, and they're like, yeah, you're bad, or something like that. She, yes, they go, you're bad, or something like what? that. <laughs> oh, we have to get into such detail. Well, no, if you're going to describe a scene, don't go, I guess that's what it was. Also, I'm not explaining it very well, so audience, you can guess what happened, what I saw. <sighs> no, so this woman is having a dream. She wakes up There's and realizes she's dreaming after it, it, she gets slashed. <laughs> also, did you notice her parents in the dream are like 80 years old? <laughs> Didn't notice that. She, like you said, she's in an empty stadium, like tossing these pom poms up, and there's nobody there, and there's all this fake cheering. And then she goes, Mom, Dad! And they're like, We hate you. You're stupid. But it's like an elderly lady <laughs> and like a World War II vet. Like, why are these, why are her parents like 90 years she's old? She's 17, you know, they're 80. <laughs> 
But I don't think they are. I think they're supposed to be like in college. No, it's. I think it's high school. Is it? Okay, yeah. sure, whatever. So yeah, she she gets in this dream like a, all of a sudden she gets torn apart and she wakes up. She wakes up in a van, which is just filled with 80s stereotypes. We got our big, fat, 80s, goofy guy. You love these, who, don't you? <laughs> I don't, because that is such an 80s trope, is just that there is a comically overweight guy who is either A, a horn dog, like this guy is, all he wants to do is get laid, or is just comically obsessed with food, like the fat guy you like. In Hamburger, the motion oh, I picture. I love that guy. <laughs> Who has to shock himself all the yeah. time. <laughs> so, but, like, all, all these 80s movies have that, where it's just, like, this guy's personality is that he is fat. It's an, Yeah, and 80s movies love the super stereotype. Everyone's like, got to be the extreme. No one can just be, like, a normal character. To the point where this fat guy has a line in the van where he goes, I just want to get laid. <laughs> And all the girls just make fun of him because it's it's fat guy Leaf Garrett and like six girls in this van. Oh no, they're no, driving. No, there's the other guy. Oh, Leaf Garrett. Excuse me. Yeah, I thought you were saying fat guy Leaf Garrett. Like that was him. Excuse me. No, there's fat guy comma Leaf Garrett comma six other girls. Thank you. So so they're driving to this cheerleader camp. As soon as they get into the driveway, the fat guy decides to stick. His enormous, gross ass out of the window of this car to moon the camp. They're not doing a drive-by. It's not one or two women. It's this entire camp filled with at least 50 girls. They park, and he can't get out because his ass is the size of a pumpkin, and he can't squeeze it out of this goddamn window. <laughs> and I also found it interesting. The camp looks so run down and disheveled. I didn't think so. It looked like a standard camp. For a cheer, I don't know. I just uh, it looks like a summer camp. I guess I haven't been to what camp in a little while. What did you need it to be? Uh, I thought it would be. You know, everyone had like a dorm room and they share cabins. Well, you see them in cabins with beds in them. Yeah, I know. I just I just thought it was going to be something different. That's what a camp is. Uh, I haven't been in a while. Oh well, they haven't changed it much since you went. Oh, and the so name I don't, of the I don't know. The name of the camp yeah. is Camp Hurrah. So, literally, this fat guy is, like, for two minutes trying to get his ass out of this thing. So, like, while everything I'm about to say is going on, in the background of the scene is just this guy's ass. <laughs> Pretty gross. <laughs> so, they, they get there, they have all of this dialogue. The, the one camp counselor, there's only one, who's, like, this late 30s woman who's just playing, like, a snarky bitch, Ms. comes up. Miss Tipton walks up to the van and she starts taking roll call. And she, the way it's framed is that her head is directly next to this guy's ass. So in this scene, his ass is the center of the action. She starts rattling off people's names who are supposed to be there from this van. Then she calls out the fat guy whose name is Timmy. He responds by farting. <laughs> then she slaps his ass with the clipboard, and he gets out of the van, and nobody seems to care. Well, that's that's a theme throughout the movie. No one seems to care. Right. Uh, there's a there is a George Buck Flowers plays this uh, I don't know groundskeeper kind of guy. He's just got a bucket hat on for most of the movie. Uh, the the only other counselor other than Miss Tipton and Bucket Hat is this cook who runs the cafeteria and has a big bushy beard and never speaks. He at some point is supposed to be a red herring for the murders that eventually happen. Two thirds so, into the movie. Right. So they all get out. The guys immediately start flirting with girls and the girls immediately start getting jealous. So inside Allison's cabin, who is our main character, the girl from the, the dream. dream. Yes. She is bunking with this uh, actually pretty cute girl, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I didn't think not too bad, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty cute, who's playing the mascot of their team? high school football team, I guess. Like, How does she get to go to the this camp? I don't know. I well, guess she's part of the rally. Part, yeah, part of the rally. Well, the mascots are part of the cheer squad. That's true. And uh, her name is Corey. Allison immediately is acting really weird, but not like through what she's doing. It's like how the actress is saying it, where Corey's like, 
man, Allison, I wish I had a boyfriend. And Allison will be like, what do you mean by that? We come to find <laughs> out like, she's kind of psychotic. Well, it's like, <laughs> what? no, it's not what come to find out. They lay it on right away. Well, that, well, the first scene in the movie is she has this horrifying, vivid nightmare. And then we find out that she's on antidepressants in this scene. Uh, Allison is mentally unstable. How do we know they're antidepressants? Okay, I don't. Then then they're barbiturates. What do you want? I just didn't know. I thought maybe I missed something. No, you missed nothing. So, <laughs> cut to a bunch of cheerleaders sun tanning on rocks. Uh, several different men are hiding in different locations around these rocks, staring at them through binoculars. One is the fat guy, who for some reason is dressed like a woman <laughs> while he's doing That's it. That's his cover. And the other one is the sheriff. <laughs> the sheriff is just standing on top of this mountain, like peering down on them. Uh, I don't. <laughs> what? Yeah, and it's again. It's saying again. Well, I guess if the sheriff's doing it, here's it, no one seems to care. <laughs> they they catch the fat guy who's dressed as a woman. I don't know why he's bothered to be dressed as a woman because it's not like they're not like, oh, you're the one other dude here. <laughs> also, this fat guy is constantly walking around with this. 1980s video recorder but it's not like that kind that you put over your shoulder it's like a cube for some reason it's the shit it's like this all oh, it is it's just the shape of a, a vhs cassette but it's usually yeah, but they it's were the not, ones you put yeah the shoulder thing right but yeah. it's not that it's like instead of being long it's like wide at the end it's strange. It's really shaped weird. But this guy's always walking around with one of those. So when they find this guy, it's like, of course, you're the, it's, you're the fat. We all saw your ass. We know who you are. So they throw him into the lake. Cut to cheer practice. There is this weird transition that happens several times in this movie where they'll cut to a scene. And then all of the sudden, the screen will just flash red. Like instantly it's red. And then it fades back into the scene, and I couldn't figure out why. At first, I thought this only happened when Allison was having her dreams, but that wasn't the case. It, then I thought it was when only when somebody died. That's what I thought at first. But that wasn't the case because they they do it like three times in the beginning when no one's dead, and then by the time people start dying the red flashing thing stops completely. <laughs> like it, Short on it, budget. It, it's a huge... Well... No more flashing. No? I don't know. Uh, that's not hard to do. You could just expose the film. It's just... It's so strange because it's almost a centerpiece for the first 30 minutes. Like, every time this red flashes, it almost makes you go like, oh, something's about to happen. But then nothing happens. And then when things start to actually happen in the movie, we never do the red flash again. So I don't know why it happens at all. I guess we'll just chalk that one up as a loss. It's just terrible and jarring. So Allison continues to be really creepy, and I'm assuming that they want us to think that she is going to kill people, but they're laying her mental illness on there so quick, so thick, you just go, well, it can't possibly be her because then this movie would be boring. So they want us to think that it's her. So because they want us to think that, I don't even care that she's being creepy because I know that it can't be her. Yeah, well, I mean, and they almost, right away, you almost know that it's not her as well. So it just doesn't make any well, sense. Well, you, don't, you don't know that, well, though. when she walks into that first cabin? Well, yeah, but that, well, we're getting there. So she has a flashback to the blonde girl who is hitting on Leif Garrett, who is her boyfriend. I don't think we mentioned that in the beginning. So she goes to this girl's cabin. We don't know why. And when she gets there, this, the girl who's flirting with Leif Garrett is dead. She's had her wrists cut. Apparently uh, so, suicide. Well, that's what they think. Yes. But, the, but after they find her dead body, the next scene is the entire camp inside this girl's cabin, <laughs> staring at her dead body. Where are the police? None of them are crying. <laughs> no one is screaming. And they are looking at this freshly dead body of one of their peers as if, like, an expensive vase fell on the floor. <laughs> like, they're just like, oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's terrible. There's a de I'm inches from a dead body. I sleep in here. My stuff's next to her bed. No, but, like... These girl, it's a camp filled with teenage girls in the eighties. Everybody should be losing their goddamn mind, and no 
nobody cares. And again, was anyone? I always say, is anyone going to call the police? Well, we get there. That's uh, part of the plot. Eventually, but. Well, yeah, it's part of the plot. Uh, but um, anyways, and does, doesn't the fat guy even like videotape it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, that's just he. He just always has his camera out. It's just always there. But so the bucket hat is there like looming over this dead body and the counselor yells at bucket hat will you hurry up with that <laughs> like it's like, a spilt milk or something right, like you mean cleaning up the dead body <laughs> and, and to your point no one's ever like hey let's call the police also guess what Camp is over. At that point in real life, yes. (laughs) Everyone get back in your vans and go home. I would say one dead kid is enough to cancel camp. Camp is closed today. You know what? Camp's closed for the summer. Don't bother coming here. Camp's done. And uh, and that makes it more inter- even more interesting in the next scene. You mean when they're just gathering up this dead body in a tarp? <laughs> no, when... they're just ca- they're just putting her in a tarp and just like carrying her like she's a pat <laughs> like she's a bunch of steak. <laughs> no, when they gather in that room, no, the one the the, the camp oh, counselor's that... like, I'm just gonna say one thing and that'll make it better. Yeah, they all gather into this, like, main room, and she's just like, well, you know, it was clearly a suicide, and suicides are sad, and camp's still on, so let's all go practice. Who's gonna win? (laughs) And later that night, while discussing the death of the girl and how she was hitting on her boyfriend, she hallucinates again, Alice. Yeah. And she has this hallucination of her face being mutilated and this is again supposed to be like oh this girl's crazy so the next morning we all wake up we're all better we all slept off that suicide nobody even remembers that girl anymore it's not even brought up again (laughs) and we're all going to cheer practice leaf garrett and the fat guy rap during this cheer (laughs) it's really bad i thought like this rap is so first of all it took me a minute to be like oh no they're rapping oh but not only that, it was so stilted that I thought, like, the internet slowed and the vocals were slowing down because it's so weird. You know what? Here it is. Allison, she's so fine. But look at her long or you'll go blind. Next is Pam. She comes out with a fam. And we'll tell you this. She ain't no sham. Next is Ronnie. She acts kind of funny. But not your money. Don't can't forget Teresa. She's got what it takes. Putting her on this team was no mistake. Last is Glory. This is her story. She's our gator. You'll be seeing her later. And we're Brad and Timmy. We're part of the bunch. Gonna take the crown and that ain't no hunch. Now get ready to hear our cheer. Cause we're the best team you see this year. So cut to mascot training where Corey Allison's roommate is sitting in a room with other mascots, filled with yeah. other mascots, all wearing their masks, and the counselor is forcing them to eat with their masks on. Yeah, and that seems and it's like what one's trying to put it like in its nose, even another one's trying well, to put the straw it's through a, its eye. Because <laughs> it's a giant cartoon man. Yeah. But it's not only like she treats the mascots as if they are subhuman. Secondary citizens. Not secondary citizens, as if they're not people. <laughs> she literally says to Corey, when Corey takes off her mask and she's like, I'm not going to eat like this. The woman goes, you're not a person, you're a mascot. You're <laughs> not even a human. <sighs> so, cut to Allison, who goes into the kitchen to get a drink. And she goes into the walk-in fridge, and she sees the creepy cook wearing the necklace of the dead girl, which which is supposed to be a red hair. Yeah, to make us think the cook might be the killer. But why would he wear it? Yeah, It's a teen girl's cheer necklace with her initials in pink. I mean, steal it, sure, whatever, but wear it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and again, would people would be like, yeah, you take one look. Eh, you know, it's kind of suspicious that you're wearing that. Well, they do do that. Do they? She, yeah, she. That's the whole point of why we're even talking about it because she sees it and she goes, "That's suspicious." Oh, well, all right then. 
Yeah, good point. So Allison goes into the walk-in fridge where she chugs like a liter of milk. Then this dead body falls on her because they just shoved this dead girl into the freezer. She runs out and calls the sheriff because she realizes the camp has done literally nothing about the dead body they had. They were just like, meh, just throw it in the freezer. They never called her parents. (laughs) They just put this dead girl in a meat locker. And they went, we'll get to it. They say this. We were going to get to it when camp was over. (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me? You imagine if camp was run like that way for real? (laughs) Oh, first of all, okay, so the sheriff shows up, right, and is pissed. He's actually pissed, rightfully so. Right. But the camp counselor is pissed at Allison for reporting this dead body. (laughs) And also, if I'm the sheriff, guess what? Camp closed. (laughs) Camp's closed right now. Also, the parents of this dead girl now own this camp. (laughs) <laughs> they sue the crap the out of them. <laughs> right. They are the owners of Camp Rara. It's closed, and this woman is in jail. I think it's Hoorah or Hurrah. Who cares? No. <laughs> this woman is in prison. <laughs> All of them, the whole staff. But so it's around this time that I was getting worried because I'm like, isn't this a slasher movie? So far, this is just about the neglectful staff of a failing camp. Like, this girl killed herself. They didn't call anybody. They're technically, what are we, 30 minutes in? There hasn't been a murder yet. Well, we don't, we think, we we think there hasn't been. There hasn't been. There's no murder. This woman cut her wrists, that's it. I think, and but so, isn't the killer, I thought the killer might have done it. Well, you're supposed to think that because this is a slasher movie, but no one's murdered. Yeah, well, I guess you're right on that matter. So cut to the office where the counselor is basically saying, I'll have sex with you if you don't tell anybody that we hid this dead girl's body. And he's like, fine. No, well, the sheriff, yeah, who 20 seconds ago was livid, is like, okay, sure. <laughs> like, you uh, win. <laughs> she changes into a cheerleader outfit. He gets into his boxers. And he has so much hair on his chest that he looks like he's holding a cat. (laughs) This part kind of disturbed me a little. Then they have weird role play sex where he's a football player and she's a cheerleader. And they have, like, dialogue worked out. So, like, it's, like, obviously it's supposed to be the, it's not supposed to be the first time that these two have, like, been bribed with sex. But to me, I was like, is this not the first time she's hit a dead body or something? Yeah, who who knows? Maybe it happens every year. Is this where kids go to kill themselves? <laughs> yeah, so, one girl a year. What are you going to do? Meanwhile, outside, the fat guy who is wearing, like, a Japanese fighter pilot outfit... <laughs> who knows? <laughs> is, ...is crawling in the grass to film these two having sex. Because that's this guy's character. Then, for some reason, Lee, we, have a, we have a scene where Leaf Garrett is just stuffing a sock into his underwear. That goes nowhere. It's not connected to anything that just happened. It doesn't lead into anything. He's just standing in front of a mirror, putting a sock in his pants, so it looks like he has a bigger penis. End of that scene. Then we cut to Allison is creeping around an old shed. For what reason, we don't even know. But here's the thing. The scene is so weird, because she goes into the shed. She's not looking for anything. She's just wandering around. She hears Bucket Hat coming. She hides, behind, she hides behind the fridge. Bucket Hat is just, you know, put some tools down. He gets to walk away, and he hears a noise. He turns around, he goes in the fridge, and he grabs something to drink, and he leaves. But the music is playing it as if we are watching some elaborate cat and mouse scene. No. And the tension is palpable. But it's not, and there are no stakes. And nothing and happens this, at the end. Right, and even if it did, even if he found her, he'd be like, oh, hey, are you lost? What are you doing in here? You shouldn't be uh, in here. Go back to your cabin. Or, or not even, like, even that would be, like, the creepy thing, but it wouldn't even be that. He would just be like, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so. I don't know if I mentioned my name. Uh, yeah, sorry to hear about that girl. That was really weird. I personally would have sent you home, but that's not up to me. So if you need anything, I'll talk to you later. It would have been that simple, but the scene is played as if, like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> Probably for another 40 minutes, nothing happens. So later that night, where the counselor wants to show some of the best practice that has happened so far, 
the giant fat guy replaces the video of practice with her fucking the sheriff. Everyone laughs, and then we leave. And nothing's ever brought up about it again, really. Nothing's ever brought up about it. She's not worried about it. She's just sort of, like, upset that everyone knows what... I guess her butthole looks like now, oh, but other than that, we're we're all cool with it. And I keep saying, and no one cares. <laughs> yeah, no one cares. No one gives a shit about anything. We're all just next scene. Dead bodies. So, yeah. So Allison. Tapes. I'm sorry. I'm just going. <laughs> just ridiculous. So outside, Allison confronts Leaf Garrett for flirting with literally every girl he sees. Yeah, and I don't know how they're even still together. Like it's right in front of her too. It's not like he like oh, hides yeah. it or anything. He he's I he's at sometimes he's doing it like it, two to inches spite and her. two inches away and like right right next to like right to spite her. He's doing it so she sees. She calls him out on it, and he's basically like, what? No. <laughs> and then he gets pissed when she won't have sex with him. Like, he, like she starts calling him out on this. He's like, oh, come on. Don't worry about it. Let's bone. And she's like, are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> and so she goes to her cabin and cries. Then it flashes to red again, and we have a violent nightmare where... Leaf Garrett is having sex with another girl while all the camp staff stand around the bed and cheer him on with pom-poms. I think it's actually her in the dream that she's... That... I don't think... I think it's... Uh, no, I don't think it is because she's really upset. Why would she be upset that she's having sex with her boyfriend? I don't know. She, no, I don't know. It, yeah, I don't know. It just seemed a little... Str I can't figure this movie out anyways. Well, what's not to figure out? This ain't Ninja Terminator. This is a slasher <laughs> movie. This girl's worried that her that her boyfriend is cheating on her, so she has a nightmare where her boyfriend is cheating on her. I just, what is there what is there to break down? I just misunderstood it, that's all. What's to misunderstand? I mean, at the time, I understand now. What? <laughs> then why even say that you don't understand? I don't know, actually. Okay, glad we brought it up at all. <laughs> So uh, th then th uh, the next day at practice, Allison gets hurt and sort of has this weird freak out from seeing her own blood. I put a note of that there because I thought that was going to go somewhere. That doesn't. That just like that just ends. Then they all go for a swim in a lake where, again, Leaf Garrett is just massaging another girl right in front of his girlfriend. <laughs> Oddly, Allison decides to leave because that annoys her. I don't, again, I don't know how they're still together. I don't either. <laughs> then Leaf Garrett takes this girl into the woods to go have sex with her. And he doesn't make that a secret either. They get into the woods, and she wants basically Leaf Garrett to tell her that she that he loves her. And his response to that is, I've had enough of this bullshit. <laughs> and he leaves. That's an exact quote. <laughs> I've had enough of this bullshit. And he leaves. This dude is such a jerk. <laughs> yeah, I was not a big fan of this character. <laughs> So then as this girl is walking back to camp, finally we see point uh, POV slasher vision, and she gets stabbed in the back of the head by some, like, shears. 41 minutes in, we finally have a slasher death. I was seriously beginning to think that this was just like a mind movie over a murder movie. I don't know why it took so long. At least we got there, though. But we haven't mentioned, and we should mention this now, Within two minutes of this movie, we see side boob. Like, right away, there's oh, naked. Yes, like, yeah. credits roll, Allison's on screen for maybe five seconds, boob. Then, go back, and every time I said we're at a lake or we're on rocks, there, there are topless girls. This movie is boring, but I'll give it a point up because it does provide boobage in the boob department. I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Nothing. I oh, laughed okay. because what you said was funny. Fine. All right, I'll cut all that out. Sorry. <laughs> so then immediately after we see this murder, we flash to red. So now I'm like, I thought the red was murder, w were nightmares, but I guess maybe they're murders, and Allison is having a nightmare. So did that murder... So at this point, I'm like, did that murder even happen... Because the red flashes mean nightmares, but we just saw murder and then her nightmare. 
And I was like, what is this movie even about at this point? Is this about a killer or is this about a girl having a mental breakdown? You just confused the crap out of me with all that if this, then that, and only if this. Well, didn't you see that when you watched it? Yeah, I did. It? I just, it's just funny to hear you say it that way. So then she has a vision in this nightmare of her killing that girl and Leif Garrett, and she wakes up in her cabin. Uh, later that night, they have the mascot contest. Uh, which just involves them jumping around like they just jump. <laughs> Corey loses. But it's rigged. And, well, it's not. She loses and gets looked at the gets a look at the bitchy counselor as if it was rigged. But she didn't do anything that the others didn't do. It's not like she was doing backflips and somersaults and one guy just like did jumping jacks. They all just hop around. Well, she looks as if she was cheated out of a gold medal at the Olympics. You're in a fucking alligator costume <laughs> in the middle of a cheerleader camp. Who gives a shit? She did get the biggest cheer. Did she? Yeah. Who cares? So now there is like 20 minutes, str- 20 minutes of just straight up cheerleading. <laughs> we just sit through like five different troops just do their cheerleading routines. And it's awful. I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> well, yeah, the, there, there wasn't a lot to see. No, and it's not even like it, it's not even like they got. I see. Here's the thing. I don't know if cheerleading nowadays is just more of a competitive sport and they actually – because, like, cheerleading in schools now is less about, like, actually cheering on the teams and more of, like, these are girls doing gymnastics and it's like a team sport Choreography and stuff like that. Right, and stuff like that and looking impressive. So does this movie's cheerleading look like absolute dog shit? Because cheerleading has gotten more professional and better since then, or because they didn't hire anybody to show them what to do, so they're like, jump around and throw your pom-poms. I would go with the latter, probably. Well, either way, it looks terrible. But we watch so much of it. So Allison's team is wondering where the girl is who died. Her name is Pam, Pam. because we say Pam a thousand times. So because they don't know – and they don't know she's dead. Right. So at this moment, nobody's worried about anything. They do the routine without Pam, and they lose. And now uh, they're going to have the queen of cheerleading camp competition, which we don't know what the nomination process is. All the nominees know who they are, and it's uh, – I don't know what I the, guess the rules are either. <laughs> There's there's like a cheer – they go and they do a cheer off, but all the cheers are the same volume. <laughs> and so I don't know how we determine who wins. But uh, one of the cheerleaders is worried about Pam. So while this is happening, she sneaks out to find Pam. Allison doesn't win queen, but takes it very well. She's like, oh, congratulations, other cheerleader. You earned it. I'm glad you and won. And it's someone on her team. So, yeah. Right. And then – but – Right after that, Leif Garrett walks up to her and he's like, don't you even care that you lost? If you cared about your life, you could be anything, but you're just a loser. <laughs> so she's mean. Like, she's like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> it's so mean. He's such a dick. Oh, man. So now that I guess this 48-hour cheerleading camp is over, <laughs> Two days. I'm like, what? Like, why, what was the purpose of this camp? What was the coaching? I didn't see any coaching or learning. There's no co- coaching. The first day they get there, everybody just sort of hangs out. Day two, there's practice, but practice for what? It's not even like they are getting trained. They show up knowing these moves, and it is only two days because we have the first night where the girl dies, then the next day they all have this. They all do practice, then they go to sleep, and the next day is this party. Like, this camp is only two or three days long. What is the point of it? Just for that competition, I guess. <laughs> what? Like, what competition? No one's there to see it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they make it out to be like it's some huge honor. <laughs> right. So now there's this party. But everybody's drinking because it's the 80s and you could drink whenever you wear, how, however old you were. It didn't matter. So while it's going on, Leaf Garrett goes to look for the girl who is looking for Pam. Right. Then Corey goes out to look for Leif Garrett, who is looking for the girl who is looking for Pam. At 
this party, by the way, there is a punk band who several times while we cut to them, the lead vocals are playing and the singer is not opening his mouth. <laughs> I didn't even notice. He's that. just standing there rocking back and forth with the microphone and there's music playing and there's words happening, but they're not coming out of his mouth. So I don't know who's singing. Maybe them. the drummer was the backup vocals. Nobody else has a microphone. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out. <laughs> Okay. So the counselor tells Bucket Hat uh, to go look for all these people who just left to go look for Pam. Now, up until this point, other than just sort of being a scraggly looking dude, Bucket Hat really hasn't done anything creepy. Except now, when he goes into this shed while he's supposed to be looking for them and he po- points a flashlight at his face... And he goes, I'll keep an eye on them, sure. Those pretty little things running around with their pretty little flesh hanging out. <laughs> and you're like, wait, this you can't just throw this in there now. <laughs> you haven't been like this for an hour and ten minutes. Why right now? Yeah, they're trying to throw us another red herring. That's the thing with this movie. Like, they none of these red herrings seem believable. Like I said, Allison's is spread on so thick that you go, it can't possibly be her yep. because it would be too obvious. This bucket hat guy is supposed to be the person that makes us think that it's not Allison, but there's no build up to him. He's actually genuinely a nice guy through most of it. The kids think he's creepy just because he's an older guy with a beard, but he actually is very helpful. If you, like he's like, oh, you know, we got a phone in here, you can do it. Oh, you're lost. Oh, don't worry, I'll help you carry your luggage. He's a nice guy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this happens. I like get this him. <laughs> this isn't earned. <laughs> you can't just do this. I so, thought for a while it might be the sheriff. Well, the sheriff isn't even in the movie. He has sex with that woman, and then he leaves. There's nothing to make you think that he's bad. Mm. Other than he's another man in this movie, so sure, throw him in the pile. So the girl looking for Pam finds Pam's body, then runs out to a trail because she's screaming. It's followed by a truck, and the truck hits her and impales her on a tree. So now we've actually got a death. Yeah. Now- We're about now, we we got about 20 minutes left in this movie, and we've actually got another kill. Yeah, and I, I thought that death was quite uh, quite awesome, the whole, like, truck through the tree thing i mean it was pretty standard it was nothing to write home about i mean and that's another issue i have with the movie like slasher movies you go to see a slasher movie to see the kills the gore the gore or at least interesting ways that people die yeah that's true like the first one this girl just gets stabbed in the back of the head and she's dead and then this one this girl gets hit by a car It's not like we see her explode, or we see her eyes pop out of her head, or we even see her get hit by a car. She just gets hit by the car, and then that's it. It's not tremendously interesting. Also, now that these kills are starting to come in, they've come in so late in the film. At this point, I'm just like, yeah, just be over. (laughs) Don't worry, it's coming. (laughs) Yeah, oh yeah, it's coming. So So now Allison goes out to join the search squad, and she runs into Leif Garrett, Corey, and Bucket Hat. They all converge on the same spot. Uh, They ask Bucket Hat if he found Pam, and he says, Do I look like a newfangled computer? (laughs) The best line in the movie. I'm like, I don't know why a computer would help with that. Uh, Um, So you haven't seen them? (laughs) It's like, yeah. You could just say no. Simple yes or no right here would suffice, bud. I wasn't I wasn't asking you to do my calculus homework. I was just asking if you've seen another person. I don't know why you being a computer would help that. No, I do, I wasn't accusing you of being a newfangled computer. Newfangled. You know what? We'll ask somebody else. We'll go inside. Thanks. <laughs> you stay out here. So, and bucket and after he says that, bucket Ed just says, "Go back into the party. I'll look for them." On the way back, they all speculate that. He, despite the fact that he hasn't done anything creepy, that he is the one who is making these people disappear. And when they get back to the camp, Allison decides to call the sheriff because now they all agree that there is a killer on the loose, even though they have no reason to think that. (laughs) They don't, they haven't found a dead body. Nobody knows anybody's dead. And they jump to... The, the It was almost as if they were writing this movie and went, 
oh, this is the end where they realize the killer's after them, <laughs> and they just wrote that in there without actually making them know that there's a killer. <laughs> we missed a scene or something. We gotta check. I gotta check out the director's cut of this. They, oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's like Lord of the Rings. It's like three hours long and has seven different endings. Oh God. <laughs> oh so boy. They call. They call the sheriff, but also at the same time, Allison is speculating whether or not she killed these people because she's been having all of these violent nightmares. Which, I mean, w- could th- you could make that in a movie and make it interesting and make it sort of subtle and surprising. But they don't, and you know she didn't do it because she's never at the spots these people are killed. So we know it's not her. So they defeat their own red herring. Because when she killed, because when that second girl got killed in the van, she had only left the party to go look for the other people. So it couldn't have been her. So you're right, they killed their own red herring, but we keep pretending like it might be? I don't even know, man. This it, it, It's so... Re- yeah, you know, you know what I liked? I was liking the movie until you started to tear it apart. Because it's not good. Uh, why did you have to so, ruin everything? So the bitchy counselor goes outside to pee in the woods. She gets stabbed in the back. She stumbles into where Allison is making a phone call and dies in Allison ar- Allison's arms. Corey shows up. And Allison is worried that people are going to think that she did it because they're going to think Allison's crazy, even though nobody actually thinks that. (laughs) So Corey helps her clean the blood off her uniform and, I guess, clear her name. The big fat guy, who's still in the party, drinks an entire handle of vodka, (laughs) throws a girl over his shoulder, and walks outside to go have sex with her. Instead of having sex, he finds the dead body, and he brings Leif Garrett and friends outside to show him the dead body. With about 15 minutes left in this movie, only now does the rest of the camp find out that something is wrong. And immediately after that, everyone leaves. Yeah, everyone leaves! They should have done that in the first place when the first, uh, you know, suicide happened. Yes, when the suicide happened, everybody should have gone home. But Leif Garrett goes inside to the party and gets in the microphone and goes, Okay, everybody... Don't panic, but two people are murdered. Everybody panics, immediately gets in their cars, and drive away. Which I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. That usually never happens. All these people would hang out and get murdered. (laughs) No, they were actually smart about it. They were actually smart. So all 50 of these people leave. And even Leif Garrett is wanting to leave. The only reason our main crew is still there because they, they still need to get Allison and Corey. But they are planning on leaving. They get Allison, they get Corey, they get in the van, but oh no. Yeah, because the wires cut or something. They cut the wires, the the wires that start your car. Bucket Hat is also just wandering in the woods. He finds one of the dead bodies, then runs to his shed to get a shotgun. So they still play him kind of as a red herring, but we know he's not. Because he found the body. Because we're seeing him react to these dead bodies in fear. So, like, why are, like, d- if you're going to make this movie, don't show that. <laughs> it's like a positive and a negative of the same number. They just cancel each other out. So he scares the kids by firing the gun into the air because he thinks one of them is the killer. They all run away in fear because they think Buckethead is going to kill them, right? Like, they all split. The girls are falling and running into the woods. <laughs> the fat guy runs about 30 yards. Stops behind a tree, sets up his camera on a tree stump, pointed at him. He lays his, he, he stands in front of the camera and goes, it's very quiet out here. Uh-oh, my giant lizard needs relief. And I'm like, oh, man, where are we going with this? <laughs> and it's like, I got, why is I he got, doing this? I honestly thought this guy was going to start jerking off on camera. Like, the, the, the way he was saying it, <laughs> yeah. he was like, there's a giant beast that needs to be released, and he's unzipping his pants, and I'm like, first of all, you are within feet of a guy that you think is trying to kill you. <laughs> it's, it's the same scene. There's not even a scene change. Why did we stop running for our lives to possibly make a sex video of you jerking it in the woods? <laughs> Fortunately, he just has to pee. But that's not even any better. Why did he film himself (laughs) taking a piss? He can't help him say he's a compulsion. I don't even... A compulsion for what? I I don't know. 
So the rest of them get back to the van. They're like, oh, no, where's Fatty? Leaf Garrett runs into the woods. And by runs into the woods, I mean runs off frame, stands next to the camera for five seconds, and runs back <laughs> because he's not even gone. He's just, <laughs> yeah, and he, he, bring, just, he brings the camera back. He brings the camera back, and they're like, I can't believe he's doing jokes, which you're supposed to think that he's dead, but I can't believe he's doing jokes yeah, either. Thanks for reassuring my, my thoughts. I'm glad it's not weird. <laughs> So they take the guy's recorder back to the cab, and they watch the VHS tape. They see him do his weird I'm going to pee in the woods skit, and then an axe comes and chops him in the gut, and he dies. Saw that. So, <laughs> right. So now that they're like, oh, no, somebody's killing people, they set up a booby trap with a, uh, with a bear trap hanging over a door, and when somebody walks in, the bear trap's going to snap on their face. So somebody does walk in the bear trap snaps down and snaps on their face and kills this guy. And they're like, yay, we killed him, we killed him. And they roll the body over, and it's the uh, the cafeteria guy who had the necklace that he stole off the dead body. Oh, no, it's the sheriff. No, it's the she- It's the sheriff? Yeah, the booby trap kills the sheriff, yeah. Oh, okay, well, the booby trap kills the sheriff. And they're all like, oh, no, we killed the sheriff <laughs> now, I guess, because I just learned that. <laughs> and Leif Garrett's like, well, fuck, that trap didn't work. He picks up an axe and runs outside as if he knows where the killer is. Why don't they just shelter in? They were. They yeah, just Yeah, I know, but why were. wouldn't they just stay sheltered in? I agree. <laughs> like, this trap goes off, it kills the wrong dude, and he runs outside as if that was the signal for something else. <laughs> he immediately finds this guy, yeah. tries to kill him with the axe, and he misses, and Bucket Hat isn't even, like, trying to kill Leaf Garrett. He's like, you just tried to kill me with an axe! And he, <laughs> he points the shotgun at Leaf Garrett, and then Bucket Hat gets shot twice by Corey, who I guess now has the sheriff's gun. Yes. Uh, they cry, and they're like, oh, my God, he was going to kill you, Leaf Garrett. Bucket Hat gets up one more time for one last scare, and then Corey shoots him again. So back in the shed, Allison is staring at the dead sheriff, and has another mental breakdown where she's not sure if she's killed all of these people or not, even though at this point we know she didn't. Like, there are six murders that we know she wasn't involved in. Why are we still pretending like she might yeah, be? I just don't get it. Why, did they, why would they keep trying to make you think that, even though... And it's not even like they... It, you could make this where you have a little progression where it's like, Allison, where were you when this happened? Isn't it strange that Allison always happens to be somewhere else when someone's getting murdered? But that doesn't happen. She's always with multiple people in another location. Like, oh, yeah, she was eating the cafeteria. <laughs> or, yeah, she was here next to me and you and her. Like, obviously, all four of us saw her, so it wasn't her. But we keep, but they keep implying that it is. <laughs> so now the four remaining people go inside to drink champagne by a campfire like it's New Year's Eve or something. And all these bodies are dead outside. It's like, really? Why don't we call town or anything? Well, it, it's funny because all of the girls are reacting the right way. They're all like, I can't believe we all just survived what is a spree killing. And they're like, like why are we from- doing this? <laughs> right. And Leif Garrett is just pouring champagne, clinking glasses, just going... <laughs> <laughs> Time to get it on. <laughs> it's funny we survived a murder, <laughs> and everyone and they look at him and they're like, "Dude, come on, not now." <laughs> and so Leaf Garrett sends the other two girls away to call town so that he can try to have sex with Allison. Oddly enough, Allison's not in the mood. <laughs> Well, yeah, she's just like, I don't think this is a good time for this. Right, and it was at this point where I was like, wait a minute, is Leif Garrett supposed to be the killer? Because, like, he gets on the verge of raping her. Like, he doesn't actually do anything, but she says no, 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 and then he, like, grabs the back of her head real hard. Yeah, and that, yeah and- nice little, then again, another red herring. Right. Well, is it? A little bit, Because maybe. it's not, I mean, it's not, ultimately, uh-huh. it's not anything worse than he's been doing before. Yeah. Openly trying to have sex with other girls in front of his girlfriend? I mean, this is on that list. <sighs> so Corey walks in and basically, like, stops him from 
doing it and says, I can't find the other girl I just left with. Go look for her. So he goes and looks for her. And this is when we immediately, like, it, it, there is a big reveal at the end, but as this next thing happens, you figure it out. Yeah, I knew. I actually knew before this. Oh, well, I yeah, I sort of figured it out, too. But Corey comes back and says, like I said, can't find the other girl, so Leaf Garrett leaves. Corey manages then to convince this poor mentally ill girl that Garrett was killing everyone and that uh, probably killed the other girl. And so she gives Allison the gun that she had, and they have to go find Leaf Garrett. They do, and Corey coaxes Allison into shooting him. So the police come and arrest Allison because she confessed to killing this guy, because she did. And they just chalk up all these other murders to Allison doing it. And Corey is standing there going, in this really weird monologue, she's like, I guess she killed all those people because she just wanted to be number one, number one, number one. (laughs) And then it just cuts to Allison in her cheerleading outfit, cheering as, no, Corey in her cheerleading outfit, cheering Corey, cheering Allison, God damn it, as she's being taken away in an ambulance to a mental hospital. And um, and then that's it, the movie's over. There we go. I mean, like, it's, it, this movie's really dumb. <laughs> like, I changed my mind on it through, uh, through our podcast here. I, I mean, first of all, it's really boring in the beginning. Like, nothing happens. You can't have a slasher movie where nobody gets slashed for 60 well, minutes. What's your ra- well, what's your rating? Our rating system is, I didn't hate it, it's a good party movie, it's a good hangover movie, or I hated it. And I mean, and it's, it's not bad. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world. We've absolutely watched worse movies. That's than for this. sure. But I didn't, it's, I can't say I didn't hate it, because I, di- I don't feel strongly enough to say I didn't hate it. It's not fun enough to be a party movie. If you need to watch this, like, if you are a guy who likes 80s slasher movies, guy or girl, him or her, who <laughs> likes 80s movies or just slasher movies, or, I mean, I guess if you need something and you're hungover, you can probably pop this on. It's not tremendously taxing on your brain. It's not a real thinker, you know? Yeah, there's not, yeah. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Any subtext, they basically look at the camera and go, well, this girl's crazy. <laughs> and so even if you're in a hungover headache and slightly inebriated still, you can probably catch what this movie's throwing at you. So if you need to watch it, make it a hangover movie. Other than that, you'd never need to see this. Well, you know what? I'm going to go back. on. I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? I didn't hate it. Really? But why, though? Well, I mean, I don't know. Yes, the first part, you know, the first 40 minutes are a little slow. I will say that, but I feel that, you know, it has like a nice little surprise twist at the end. You get your, you know, you do get your slasher stuff in there. And uh, I found it a little bit comical. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't to the point where... The, what parts did you find comical? Just some of the overly 80s... Uh, that guy's ass from the beginning? I thought that was a little comical. I mean, I, I will give you that yeah. as much... Like, I was able to see the the surprise coming... As you can with a lot of movies. I'm not going to fault the movie for me being able to figure that out. I don't know. The surprise was kind of just like... Well... Because it's like, oh, it was another girl who was crazy? <laughs> well, All right. Who knows? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I did, Yeah, I just didn't hate it. And it, I, I find that when I use the I didn't hate it uh, rating, that it usually comes from when I can watch the film all the way through and never have that feeling of, oh my gosh, is this over yet? That's fair enough. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's. I mean, and I never, I never had that through the. I was never like, oh man, I, I really just don't want to watch this. So. And I'll con- and I'll concede with your review. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. It's just that first, I I I expect a lot more out of my slasher movie. I oh expect, yes, I do too. Yeah, I agree. But. I mean, I ex- the amount of deaths that occur in this, I expect them spread out over ninety minutes as opposed to crammed into the last twenty. And frankly, a lot of those kills weren't even that interesting. No. It's mostly people getting stabbed, sometimes even off screen. So when somebody, like, dies, it's not even, like, shocking. It's, it, and once everyone leaves, right, you go, okay, well, obviously Allison's going to be left because she's the main character and everyone else is going to die. There's not even that, like, 
character build up of anybody else to like, oh, maybe it's this person, maybe this person's going to live. It's just you. Once we get into the killing, you're kind of like, all right, I see where this is going. Yeah, but well, that's all I got so, about it, man. That's all I got too. It wasn't a tremendously interesting movie this week. Nah. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hate mail, you can send us hate mail at moviehotdog at gmail dot com. We have a Twitter you can follow us on at moviehotdog. Uh, you we have a Facebook you can send us comments, like us, message us. That's where we've been getting all of our uh, re- uh, requests lately. That this movie was a hot dog on Facebook. If you get this on Podomatic or iTunes, please rate and review and subscribe as it really helps the show. I have nothing to say. Francis, do you have something to say? Yep. Just uh, thanks, John, for picking this for us. And, yeah, this movie was a hot dog. We're also assuming his name was John. (laughs) The end. (laughs)